As a consequence of centuries of human-driven greenhouse gas emissions, the atmosphere is heating up. This much you know. The ocean heat uptake is actually much larger. This much everybody should know. Today, sea level rise, the main impact of glacier and ice sheet melting, is forcing its way onto society's crowded political agenda. There's a rising tide of coastal planning, engineering, and politics grappling with the cost-benefit analysis of how best to manage this catastrophe. Here, we will wade through the key physical factors to address which ice sheet is melting faster, Antarctica or Greenland, and how that competition might change in the future. Let's check out the competition for Biggest Loser, Antarctica versus Greenland. This is The Biggest Loser, a series where we pitch the largest drivers of ice loss in Antarctica and Greenland against one another to find out who wins or who loses. I'm an Antarctic nerd and Jason Vox is a Greenland expert. <laughs> and it may just be that we're all losers. We're in Loserville. Population us. 178 pounds, you lost 100. Before we jump in, make sure you hit that bell button and subscribe to both of our channels. And drop us a like and a comment below, let us know what you think. For the past two decades or so, Greenland has been the largest regional source of sea level rise. Meanwhile, there's Antarctica, much bigger, much greater sea level rise potential. What about Antarctica? Will Antarctica win the competition for Biggest Loser? Surface melt is still rare over the Antarctic ice sheet. We do see some surface melting on the Antarctic Peninsula where the climate is less polar, it's a bit warmer, and it facilitates surface melting at lower elevations. But Antarctica's surface climate would have to warm a lot more for meltwater runoff to become a significant source of direct ice loss. What's more important are the indirect impacts of surface melting on things like hydrofracturing, where meltwater trickling into cracks can fracture ice shelves, or for basal lubrication, where meltwater at the base of the ice sheet can turn glaciers into giant slip and slides. But even so, it would probably be decades, if not a century, until these kind of things are important for the flow dynamics of Antarctica as a whole, continent-wide. By contrast, Greenland surface melting can be intense. Several meters of ice melts down around the lower one-third of elevation of Greenland each year. So Greenland's meltwater runoff is large, producing a flux of water into the ocean that in one season could run the Mississippi River for eight months. Greenland meltwater runoff is the second largest single mass loss factor. Eclipsed today only 15% by solid ice discharge from Greenland tidewater glaciers. Greenland ice sheet meltwater runoff has been increasing twice as fast as solid ice discharge, and so could outpace solid ice discharge especially as tidewater glaciers continue to retreat out of the ocean. The Antarctic has far more contact with the ocean and far more area below sea level than Greenland does. In fact, in Antarctica, the main source of ice mass loss is from ocean melting, not from the carving of these massive tabular icebergs as impressive as they may be. Ocean melting at the grounding line of the enormous Pine Island Glacier is more than 40 meters per year, and its neighbor Thwaites, aka the Doomsday Glacier, is almost entirely melted by the ocean. Scientists believe that both may have begun an irreversible retreat. Ocean melting at Greenland Tidewater Glacier faces has been observed to range from one to four meters per day. These rates of underwater melting can be a hundred times larger than the surface topside melt rates and are comparable to the ice losses from iceberg calving. Ice 
Iceberg carving from Antarctica is currently double that from Greenland, losing about 1,000 gigatons per year this way versus about 500 gigatons per year for Greenland. After all, Antarctica has 10 times more ice than Greenland. The recent Greenland ice flow into the ocean averages 470 gigatons each year. That's equivalent with five kilometers of water on Manhattan Island each year. But some of that ice actually melts before breaking off or calving. And to my knowledge, only a handful of glaciers coming off of Greenland have had their underwater melting assessed. While for the past two decades, Greenland ice loss has outpaced that from Antarctica, my sense is that it's just a matter of time till Antarctica takes the dubious distinction of being the winner of the biggest loser of ice. On the other hand, however, you've probably heard that the Arctic is warming two, three, four times faster than the rest of the globe. In Antarctica, it isn't warming that fast. Yet. Meaning that Greenland and its surface melt dominated ice loss may, for the foreseeable future, continue to punch above Antarctica's weight. But Antarctica also contains a hell of a lot more ice. So while it might happen more slowly, in the long term, Antarctica is destined to be the biggest loser of all. In the long term, Antarctica is destined to be the biggest loser of all. In the long term, Antarctica is destined to be the biggest loser of all.